Hello, my name's John Dexter and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe as I would much appreciate it and hit that notification bell to see future videos. I'd like to show you how I captured this image, uh, the technique I used and what I had to do to it in post-processing. So let's get right into it. I unfortunately didn't take a um, clear straight uh, image of this composition but it gives you an idea of what I was working with um, which will give you a better understanding on how I made it. This was taken as a, a two frame multiple exposure in camera on the light setting. The reason we put it on the light setting is because it will make the uh, lighter parts of the image, namely the sky, uh, more prominent than the foreground that was dark. Now I'm going to explain how I got this final image uh, in two parts. The first is how I got this illusion and the second will be how I lined everything up. So it's quite simple to achieve this illusion. You first of all take a picture of the tree as you would if you were taking it as a standard photo. You then turn the camera upside down and take the same image again and the camera will amalgamate the two images and you will end up with this illusion. Now as far as lining everything up, lining the tree trunk up and getting your horizon where you want it, um, as you can see I've got more sky than I have foreground and the uh, horizon is slightly below center. But let's make this simple for a start. If I wanted the horizon in the middle and the same amount of sky as foreground, I use my focus point dot in the viewfinder as a focus point on the image. So I would set that focus point in the viewfinder dead center. I would then place it on the top of the horizon and a point on the tree which would be there. I would then take the first image then I would turn the camera upside down again placing that focus point in exactly the same place on the image and take the second shot and hopefully your tree trunks will line up and you will get your horizon dead center same amount of sky as you have foreground. Now obviously if you did that and you wanted more sky or you wanted your horizon somewhere else you could easily go into uh, post process, crop it and move it and that, that's absolutely fine. But if you want to do it in camera, so we want the horizon below center line, we want more sky than we have foreground. I would move that focus point dot in the viewfinder just below center or roughly where we want the horizon to end up in the final image. I would then place that focus point in the same place again, top of the horizon and a point on the tree. I would take the image, I would then turn the camera upside down not moving that focus point in the camera, placing it in exactly the same place and take the second image. That will give you your horizon below the center line and more sky and less foreground. As say for argument's sake, I wanted the horizon up here, I wanted less sky, more foreground. I would move the focus point in the camera viewfinder above the center line or roughly where I wanted the horizon to be in the final image. And again I will place it at the top of the horizon and a point on the tree, take the first image, turn the camera upside down, again not moving that focus point in the camera, place it in exactly the same place and take your second image. Now you hope that the actual tree trunk lines up, um, but in reality, 
you will probably find that a lot of the images, one tree will be over here and another tree will be over here. But you just have to keep taking frame after frame and keep practicing uh, until you get it right. Uh, I probably took 40 or 50 images of this tree before um, everything came together. But eventually it will and your tree will be lined up. You'll have the horizon exactly where you want it and you'll, you'll have a, a, a pleasing image. I'll just quickly run through the camera settings I had to take this image on the day. It was uh, taken with my Nikon D700 with a 35 to 70 2.8D lens. Now this is a vintage lens that uh, produces some uh, beautiful images and I actually did a review on my three vintage lenses that I have. Um, so if you want to take a look at that sometime please do. Uh, it was taken at 35mm um, with an aperture of f8 which gave me uh, one two hundredth of a second. Um, ISO was set to its base rate of 200 and the white balance I had on this particular day was on auto. I'll just run through quickly with you uh, what I did in post-processing. Um, I'll just deconstruct the image and show you that is what I got out of the camera. Now you'll see that there's a lot of auto touch brushes here and this is basically just to tidy the image up. Um, I had a look at it and I thought this bush here is repeated over here. It's not a good look. Um, it's not, not really what we want. Um, and also if you have a look the horizon didn't quite line up either side of the tree. I couldn't get that spot on but I got it a bit better and I would probably um, get rid of a couple of the branches on the tree that didn't really fit in and obviously you've got your dust bunnies. So once you've done all those retouch brushes that is basically the image that you ended up with. So it's, it's sort of tidied it up a little bit. We had to do something with the tree um, because if I just knock that off that was very dark and dismal and no colour in it which which we don't want. So by putting a colour control point uh, in there and adjusting the different settings we managed to get some nice colour in it. Now because the adjustments up here and I had that radius on it um, it's made the bottom half of the tree darker than the top which is what you want because if this was a reflection it indeed would be darker. These other control points here are there purely to neutralize this adjustment. So if I, if I just turn these off a minute you'll see the effect on the sky that this adjustment had which you, you really don't want. I mean that looks pretty horrible. So by putting those neutral points in it gets rid of that horrible colour cast. The final thing I did was um, I wanted the sky to be a little bit darker than the um, foreground um, because if this was a reflection it indeed would be lighter. So I put in a uh, gradient filter into the sky and just did a tiny um, curves adjustment which has just darkened down the sky just a tad but just enough to make a difference. So there you have it that is the uh, final image. Um, I hope that's given you some ideas to go out and try it. It's a lot of fun. So if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel as I would much appreciate it and hit that notification bells to see future videos. So this is John Dexter, bye for now.